the the focus on sort of job readiness that sort of came about during the industrial revolution, I think was sort of an accident. I think it was unintentional. So for time immemorial, the only people who got a formal education were the privileged. And it was considered a luxury. School meant not at work. And by extension, sort of the the gifts of literacy, of thinking abstractly, of pursuing philosophy, and then later science, those were the privileges of, of the wealthy. And deep down, intentionally or not, the uneducated were deprived of that kind of intellect, by and large, were deprived of that kind of intellectual life. When uh, more and more children needed to be cared for out of the home because their parents were working out of the home, there developed this need for somewhere for kids to be while, while parents were working. And that sort of began the slow drift towards school for all, which has enormous benefits, obviously. But as that sort of took hold, the purpose of education shifted. It's a crazy paradox, and I'm no historian, but it seemed like as we began to think of education or formal education, school as a place for everybody, we also began to think, well, if it's for everybody, it better be a very different thing than it's been. If it's for everybody, how could it be the pursuit of enlightenment or higher order thinking? It better just be job training. That's at least a piece, I think, of how schooling became focused on this job readiness. And then that went hand in hand with the idea of thinking about all these kids that were going to need to be able to work and they were going to need to be able to work at whatever, you know, in factories or stores or at trades. And the idea of using school to get them ready for those things sort of just fell into place. The problem with it, I mean, there's so many problems with that with that model. And it's not one that people examine very carefully. I mean, even now I work at one of the most selective colleges in the country. And I think by many measures, one of the best colleges in the country, I certainly love it and adore it. We get incredibly bright students and they're very motivated and they're very engaged, but they talk all the time about their college experience in terms of what it will, how it will help them in the workplace, even though the best thing we can offer them is not training in some trade or some particular narrow career path, but rather an education that enables them to think in complex ways about complex matters, which is the world they're moving into. Uh, so so that idea of schooling or education as being a pre-professional training ground has sort of permeated all levels of education. And it doesn't work, number one. You don't really prepare people for work by trying to train them in these narrow ways. And meanwhile, you spend all that time sort of unsuccessfully preparing them for particular, I don't know what, professions, and you lose the opportunity to help them all become enlightened uh, in the truest sense of that word, able to read complex material, to think about complex arguments, to consider various approaches to a problem, like a mathematical approach or a literary approach, to think like a social scientist or to think like a natural scientist. Those are all ways of thinking that any citizen should be able to access at some level, if not at the professional level. And that's what a good education should give you. And that if you can't do everything, so if you were going to do that, you would have to let go of this kind of false sense that you're preparing people for jobs. And that doesn't even begin to get at the, what I think is the more fundamental question, which is, is school a place where kids develop a liking for thinking and, and debating issues and deliberating over complex questions? And if you can't give them that liking for sort of higher order thinking, then you've, you've lost whatever game you were playing. 